The guys at DuPont have been cooking up some pretty wild things in the lab for quite some time now. First, it was gunpowder, a product the original DuPont family began mixing way, way back in 1802. His powder ignited when it was supposed to, a big advantage over the competitions, which might go off in your back pocket, or worse, not go off at all. DuPont scientists had another big hit more than 100 years later with a little item called nylon. This strong, sheer, light material made great parachutes, sails, baby jumpers, and ropes. Did we mention ladies' stockings? 1939 was a great year for leg men. And 30 years ago, the mines of DuPont came up with Corian. You know Corian, right? Corian, a spice? A new music group. It's probably somebody that came from Korea or something that came from Korea. Wrong, wrong, wrong. This is Korean. They make beautiful countertops out of it. It's a very strong, very tough surface. But what's in it? From a marbleized substance, like marble rock. Recycled glass. Seashells, primarily. To find out, let's go to DuPont in Buffalo, New York where beautiful sinks and countertops like these are in production right now. Ed Otremba is the resident Mr. Wizard here at the Buffalo plant. Maybe he can get us started. Corian is basically 60 to 65 percent of what we call an inorganic filler or material. And it starts off with this. This is mined by one of our suppliers. It's called bauxite ore. They take this ore, and from it, after clarifying it, cleaning it up and digesting, they get a nice white powder, which we call ATH. This may look like the surface of the moon, but it's actually the surface of a train car full of ATH short for alumina trihydrate. Michael Gross shows us how it enters the process. We got a, a vacuum blower, and we got a, um, a filtering system, and we have uh, hoses that we hook up to, and we suck the ATH, the powder, out of the rail cars, and um, in turn put it into the silo. The ATH travels down through the silos in a series of shakers and shoots, where it meets the second key ingredient in Corian. Now this by itself is nothing until we mix it with this little clear syrup, which we call methyl methacrylate syrup, and it's basically an acrylic. So these two constitute around 98% of our corian. Mixing the corian is supervised by computer. Area Superintendent Mike Miklovich explains. And here we combine the alumina and the high performance acrylic into what we call raw mix. And the way to think about that is uh, to draw a pancake analogy. You mix up flour, water, and milk to make your batter. And in a very similar way, we mix the alumina powder with the high-performance acrylic to make a raw mix for Corian. This might be a good time to remind you, we're not making this, we're making this. Lovely countertops. Let's watch as the liquid corian hardens and is cut and trimmed into countertops. This isn't magic. This lettering is applied with an inkjet, similar to the way the inkjet printer for a computer works. The sheets of corian get showered, scrubbed, and polished to a high gloss. Then they're ready for anything, and I do mean anything. But for now, they'll have to be content just being sorted and stacked into piles. Corian sheets leave DuPont for retail finishers like Shannon Enterprises. Comes in sheet goods. Normally we buy them in 30 by 12 feet and we just get the straight sheet good. We make cutouts 
and we add thick edges to them and backsplashes and also we do vanity tops and mostly uh, a lot of showers also. There's the whistle, but there's still more to tell. When we rejoin the line, we'll show you how Corian assumes a complex shape like a sink. Forget the pancake analogy, we're making waffles when we return.